People have told me for years I need to try some Noveski parts. Well, careful what you wish for. Here we have the Noveski 16 inch recon barreled upper I assembled for a customer out of his parts. I have no relationship with Noveski, I am a dealer for Geisley and ALG by proxy, but everything else is bought either with my money or with the customer's money. Now because the customer is letting me review it, the assembly and fixing what Noveski refused to do in anything resembling a timely manner was free. John Noveski isn't here to steer his ship anymore, so this one is on the house. Shout out to you, sir. But before we get to basics, this video is brought to you by a prepubescent hop. Oh, that guy? He's gay. What else? Nothing. He's just... he's just gay. The centerpiece of this review is the Noveski barrel. Now Noveski has a different name for each barrel length, so the 16 inch is the recon length, which is way less confusing than just saying a 16 inch barrel. I mean, come on, diplomat, shorty, commando, infidel, and afghan makes total sense, like we all get it. So simple, clean, elegant, and easy to remember. The recon barrel is a 16 inch mid-length 416R stainless steel 1 in 7 twist their quote unquote match, their words not mine, proprietary, what a funny word, chamber is hand polished. The barrel extension has extended and polished feed ramps, all good there. Now they call the profile a medium profile, but it's just a tad heavier than that coming in at about 35 ounces with most of that weight fortunately towards the back. Now for reference, the Ballistic Advantage .750 Hansen is about eight ounces lighter and the 625 Hansen would be considerably lighter than that. The profile should, in theory, be good for a more accurate rifle. They also make a lighter version as well if you did want to reduce that weight. Now, weight is not a big deal to me as long as I'm getting something for it. So for a higher volume of fire system or if I'm getting more accuracy out of it, I'm fine with adding a few ounces. Now, the Noveski, like the Hansons, come with a pinned low-profile gas block and also a mid-length tube, which is a nice touch. Price rolls in at a comfy $440 MSRP and about $400 street, so that's a, quite a hefty asking price. And that's a lot, but at least the quality control and customer service is good, right? Well, that goes back to how I came into possession of this setup. The customer bought the barrel and other components for a home build and messed up the assembly that's on him. He had an issue with the tube and gas block. Long story short, he messed up his roll pin and the tube and needed help. He went to Noveski first, and they told him it would be a month or two before they could get to it. And that's when he reached out to me, and I did it in about five minutes. Now, Noveski doesn't dimple their barrels. I went ahead and did that for their single set screw gas block. I wasn't given their proprietary pin for the barrel, or at least I couldn't find it, so I used a simple spiral pin. It's just a 8th inch hole with a tapered side, and you could simply take a 1 8th inch cobalt bit and finish out the hole and use whatever pin you want. It's not very complicated. Now, something that the owner also asked of Noveski is if they could tell him what size the gas port was on the barrel. And they told him no, that's proprietary. The size of the hole on the barrel is proprietary. Interesting. Now a word on that proprietary gas port size. Sorry to spill the beans, Noveski, but it's not proprietary. That's not the correct word. The word you were looking for was something like massive, oversized, or just uncalled for. But it's also stepped. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me draw you a picture badly. So here we have the bore where the bullet does its little spinny spin, and at the 12 o'clock position we have the gas port. 
Now the side of the gas port closest to the bore is at 0.078 or 78 thou, which is slightly overgassed for a 16 inch mid mid barrel. 76 thou is the proper crane spec size, but 78 is not egregious, but then it very, very quickly opens up to a 0.082, which is very overgassed. Now for reference on a 16 inch mid, once you hit about 0.086, you start to rip case heads off, so we're about halfway there with this build. Now because it opens up so quickly, it performs more like a 80 or 81 thou gas port size, which is very punchy. When we throw in a suppressor, it's kind of terrible to shoot, and we are adding a lot of gas back into the system that we simply don't need to, and some of that in a DI system is coming right back at the shooter's face. Now we are mitigating that with another part that I added in the back end. Uh, so anyways, it's not proprietary, it's just big. Now the customer is going to be running it with a Reardon dual port brake as a suppressor host, so he will probably come up with something to fix the gassing on his side. Moving on to the handguard, we have the ALG EMR V3-X. I just want to talk, Bill. But it's a good rail, five-sided M-lock, which is actually a little annoying at times depending on what you want to mount to it. It's basically a chonky circle that bolts directly to your timed barrel nut. The lockup is good, the rigidity is good, it's a little on the heavy side, it's a little thick, but who am I to talk? It's also a good deal. If you can find them in stock, they can be as low as 120 bucks at times, which is a pretty good deal. I would recommend them. The upper is a generic mil-spec forged up receiver. Perfect, you don't need anything more than that. 99% of the time, it's just a waste of money. The upper is of course hand-lapped by me, and the barrel is bedded to the upper via Loctite 620. Barrel nut has Aeroshell 64 grease applied to the threads, and is sequentially torqued down to between 45 and 55 foot-pounds. These are of course timed barrel nuts, shims may be needed, so torque will vary slightly between upper to upper. 4 second self-promotion. Subscribestar is the best way to support the channel, and Focus Shooting LLC is my company, check them out if inclined. Now let's talk about performance. Starting out with shootability, it's very gassy with a suppressor on. My Turbo K and Resonator Ks are medium back pressure cans, and I was getting gassed out very quickly without some sort of mitigation system installed. The useless stepped gas port size isn't doing much, they would have been so much better off just going with the crane spec 0.076 or even 0.078 on the more duty side of things if you want a little bit more reliability headroom. Either one of those would have performed much better. Now you can mitigate the gas with really heavy buffers and springs or an A5 extended buffer system, but then you're just adding more stuff in the back to fix an issue up front, which is not my favorite solution. The mitigation system that I've been using here is a Foxtrot mic adjustable BCG, which is like the bootleg adjustable BCG, but much, much worse. Instead of four settings, you only have two, suppressed and unsuppressed, but the settings are too far apart to be usable, and you need to take the BCG out of the upper to adjust the settings, which is very annoying. Most of my uppers, won't run on the suppressor setting with a suppressor. At least with my cans and my systems, they aren't adding enough back pressure to get the thing to run in the suppressed setting. But with the Noveski Canyon gas port, it will eject full power M193 at around three o'clock, or maybe even a little bit more aggressive at times, with simply carbine buffers and springs. And that's about perfect because you can always throw in an H2 buffer and be right in that sweet spot if you are that worried about it. So this is the one scenario in which the Foxtrot mic adjustable BCG has been worth it on the suppressed setting. A match made in mediocrity, if you will. The FM adjustable BCG was sent in for testing by a kind viewer of the channel to test out, and through several thousand rounds, it's not great. Maybe I should just make an adjustable BCG video. So now let's get on to accuracy. Now surely a $400 plus dollar barrel that is 416R, stainless steel, and a relatively heavy profile will shoot great. Or not. Starting out with PPU M193 clocking in at a smoking 3050 FPS out of a 16 inch barrel, we actually produced our best group of the day at about 1.5 MOA. Moving on to AAC 77 grain which clocked in at 2650 FPS, that also came in at around 1.5 MOA. Next up we have our Hornady 73 grain ELDMs which produced a 2-ish MOA group, and following that up with Hornady Black 77 grain, that also produced 2-ish MOA out of the Noveski. Now to be clear, I am very confident that the barrel is capable of producing good accuracy with a load that it likes. I think the owner is going to be mostly using the AAC 77 grain, which isn't bad and performed just fine, especially for the cost. The accuracy isn't bad, and it's honestly kind of what you should expect out of an AR. 
but I don't know what you're paying $400 for. It shoots worse than a Ballistic Advantage Hansen, it's heavier, it's less durable, and it's at least twice as expensive. A Roscoe Purebred is also half the cost and shoots far better. Other than the Noveski name, I don't know what you're buying. Now, I'm not saying that it's bad, but I don't know why you would actively seek one of these out. And after talking to the customer more about it, he has come to the same conclusion and would have gone a different route if he was starting over. It's not that it's bad by any means, but it just doesn't do anything well enough to justify its price tag. But that's about it for me on this one, gentlemen. And I do want to say thanks to everybody for watching and for being the best fans on the planet. Go ahead and like, share, and subscribe while you're here because that's free and does help us out quite a bit. And with all that out of the way, guys, thank you once again for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. God bless.